Today what we're going to work on is this line of best fit again, but in the past all we've looked at is, I'll just go back to the graph, uh, in the past all we've done is say, yeah look there's your data, right? and the line of best fit should be sort of roughly through there, I just asked you to draw one in and you just did it by eye, okay? If all you've got is the picture, then all you can do is do it by eye. However, we have the data. Right? So you can actually calculate the line of best fit, not a line of best fit. There is actually a way to calculate the line that goes through and fits the best. Uh, and that is called, I'm going to write it on here. Uh, hold on a second, bear with me. Uh, you might want to write this down in your book. It is called, no you won't need that. We'll do, we'll work on it on the computer. It's called the least squares line of best fit. I'll say that again. The least squares, as in L-E-A-S-T, least squares, line of best fit. So, I just... Now, let me explain what this is. We already have a rough idea of what the line of best fit is. It's a line that, roughly speaking, is going to go sort of through the middle of your data. Something like uh, that. Okay. So if you were asked to do this by eye, I think that'd be fairly okay. Maybe actually I'll move it down just a teeny bit. Something like, uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, you can see how I did that by eye because you'll notice there's exactly one data point that's on my line of best fit. How many are above? Two. Two. And how many are below? Two. Not a hundred percent, you know, guarantee, but that's a pretty good way to know. At least we do this when we're marking. Is this a decent line of best fit? Is the same number above as below? Are they roughly the same amount? So this is approximate, okay? But in order to actually work out one unique line of best fit, how do we actually measure this? How do we quantify it? Here's what we do. And um, if you go back to where you've drawn some lines of best fit onto data, maybe you want to add this in. The better the line of best fit is, right? The closer it will be to all these data points here. You see all my red lines? They're all the distances from your data points to your line of best fit. Okay. Now, what you want is for all of those distances to be the smallest possible. Okay. However, you also want not just the minimum distance, but you also want some above and some below. Okay. Now, this is actually quite tricky because when you think about, say, let's go with orange. When you think about these distances here, they're below and you want to take into account the fact that they are below and not above, okay? So you would actually say, well, these are negative. These guys over here, right? They're below the line of best fit. Whereas these guys on top are positive, okay? So we want this to balance out, but at the same time, we want the smallest number, okay? So instead of saying the smallest number, that would just be as negative as possible because negative numbers are all smaller than positive numbers. What we say instead is, I want the smallest squares. Let me draw it for you and I'll show you what I mean. If I draw some squares onto here, uh, I'll do it to the, this side. If I draw some squares onto here, I wonder if you can see how this solves the problem of positives and negatives, right? If you square a number, regardless of whether it's positive or negative or not, uh, you'll get a positive, and if we can make that the smallest possible, if I can make all of these squares the smallest possible, then that means my line of best fit will be really, really good. Okay. Now that process of actually doing that is quite complicated. Um, your calculator will help you with a lot of it. We're going to need the correlation coefficient. Uh, we're going to need to know um, the mean of each of the x values, which is across, and y values. That process is quite tricky, which is why I've given you your reference sheet, formula and data sheet. Can you look at the side which is copied in A4 rather than the side that's copied in A5? On the side that's copied in A4, I want you to look at the bottom right hand side. And you'll see there it says, least squares, line of best fit. Okay. So you are going to be expected to do this. Let me show you what I mean. Oops, I spun around without me doing Remember that HSC question we pulled this data out of, right? So this is what I showed you. The first thing I said was, whoops, is we're going to have to use our calculator, press the buttons, put all that data in, and we're going to have to verify 
uh, this 0 0.907, or whatever it was, okay? You've got to do that, but now if I scroll just a little bit, it says, by using the appropriate formulae from the formula data sheet and the given information, you know, all, all that data, determine the equation of the least squares line of best fit, okay? Now, I wonder if you look at this, you think, wow, okay, why have they made this, so, this question so long? I'll tell you why. Your calculator can actually determine the line of best fit pretty much automatically, just like it does for the correlation coefficient, okay? So I'm gonna suggest, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. I'm gonna suggest you use that as kind of like a, I can check my answer. I can know whether I got it right or not, okay? However, as this question suggests, the wording of it, also the fact that it's how many marks? Three. And look at how many lines of working you've got there. They're expecting you, they, they want you to know how to do this. So I'm gonna walk you through it, okay? Now. To prepare us for this, I want you to just look at the um, at the stuff on the formula data sheet and how much stuff has to go into it. You're gonna need the gradient. We're gonna calculate that in a minute. You're gonna need R, what's R again? Correlation. That's the correlation coefficient. So this will work that out for us. You're gonna need the standard deviation of the Y scores. How are you gonna do that? With the graph thing. With this again, okay. Um, you're gonna need the standard deviation of the X scores, which means this again. And then you've got two last things, x bar and y bar. They even tell you what those are. They're the means for each of the x and y values. How are you going to do that? Okay. So there's lots of pieces that go into this. I'm going to walk you through it. But what we need to have is not just this information and your scatter plot. I'd also like you to punch back this information into your bivariate data mode on your calculator. So I've since put all kinds of other data in there. So I'm going to quickly redo that and then we're going to have a go at this together. So just as a bit of a refresh in case you're like, I missed the period or uh, you can't remember, I'm going to make sure everything is cleared out. I always do that because I'm a bit paranoid. I'm going to go mode, stat. Which one of these do I pick again? Two. Two. That's by very. The X's are the physics and the Y's are the chemistry. So I'm going to go ahead and just punch all those numbers in. Let's have a go at this together. Now, this is going to be a little bit tricky because you're kind of going to need your eyes in three places at the same time. Okay, You're going to need to use this kind of like as your recipe list, your guide. Okay, um, All of the things you're going to need to put into here, you're going to need to get off here. Right? And then thirdly, you actually need to show, just like I showed you on that HSC question, you're going to need to show the working that puts all of these things together. Okay? So, here's the way I'm going to suggest that we walk through this. On your page, and I'm going to go back to that now. On your page, we're going to say, okay, what I'm working out is line of best fit. So that's the first thing I'm going to write down, just so that all of these equations and numbers I'm going to write down in a minute aren't in a vacuum. I'm explaining what I'm doing. The line of best fit is the first thing that you see underneath the heading on the formula data sheet. Y equals <coughs> gradient times x plus y intercept. Now we've done this back in AM3, I think, looking at straight lines. That's the long way of saying, turn over the other side of your formula data sheet. Again, look at the very bottom right hand corner. You see it says this? You recognize that? Right? So this... This, now you can come back to the line of best fit, is exactly what the first line says. Y equals gradient times X plus Y intercept. Okay, so they're just explaining what this is. All right, I need to work out the two pieces that go in here. Can you see on the formula in the data sheet, it says gradient equals, and then there's a bunch of stuff. Yes. And then it also says Y intercept equals, yes. and then there's a bunch of stuff. Yes. So that's what's gonna go into each of these things. That's gradient. And that is y intercept. Okay? So let's go ahead and work out. You go one line down on the formula data sheet. It says gradient equals. Okay? Now, I want you to look carefully at what that's got on the formula data sheet. I'm going to switch over to my calculator now, and we're going to work this out. Here's my calculator. All my data is there. Ooh, can you see that? 
How's the, is that better? Mm -hmm. How's that? Okay. Yep. I'm just mindful of the reflection. I'm going to clear it out so that I can now go into, you know, putting in, requesting whatever data I want. The formula in data sheet tells me I need to put in three things. I need R. So I'm going to go shift one. Where am I going to go to find that correlation coefficient? Five, by the way, REG um, refers to one of the names of the line of best fit that I mentioned before. Line of best fit, trend line, it's also called the regression line. Regression line? That's what REG stands for. In fact, maybe on your piece of paper you want to note down, next to where you wrote line of best fit, another of the names is line of regression or regression line. So I'm going to hit five. Which one do I want? Three will give me R. Okay. That's the correlation coefficient, but that's not actually um, the whole thing that I need. Go back to your formula data sheet. What am I going to multiply by? Have a look at the formula data sheet. What's it say on the top of that fraction? Standard deviation of the Y scores. Okay, so I'm going to go again. I want to find where is the standard deviation. Okay. Do you remember where the standard? We've worked, we've done standard deviation before. So standard deviation. I, mm, is it? No, that's not. That's that's quartiles. That's quartiles. Go back. Shift. Well, I've got to go back. Five. There's R. I actually think it's in four for VAR. Okay. Now, before you've seen some of these before. For instance, see that guy there? I know it's hard to read on your calculator, but that's the sigma, right? That's standard deviation. Before, all we saw was sigma x. But now there's extra things there. Why are there extra things? Because you've got one for each axis. There's bivariate data, right? So now you can see there's a standard deviation for y and a standard deviation for x. Which one do I want first? Y. Y. That's 6. That's on the top. And then on the bottom, I'm going to divide by the standard deviation of x, so sigma x. So I'm going to go shift, 1, 4, 3. Yeah, you got it? So this is what my calculator display shows now. When I hit equals, it should give me what the formula data sheet says is the gradient. Okay, are you ready for me to press equals? That's what I'm getting. Got the number? Yes. So go back to your piece of paper now. Go back to your piece of paper and I would write down that number. 0.5. 